urban farming is bringing food production into busy populated areas and it's more popular than ever. It is also known as urban agriculture and is all about producing food inside city limits. It has its challenges but it also offers many benefits like food security, decreased waste, community involvement and more. Today we are in Nigeria at Goody Leisure Farm. It is a social enterprise targeting to transform smallholder farmers into eco-entrepreneurs through planned, structured, predictable and profitable value chains of smallholder producers, youth agri-entrepreneurs, franchises, incubators and vendors. Goody Leisure Farm has changed lives of many youth in Uganda by empowering them through capacity building, networking and advocacy. I want to say a lot about this place, but I believe she can do it better. So hi, how are you? Hi, yeah. hi Joanne. It's nice hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, my name is Joanne Nambeja. I'm the marketing manager of Goody Leisure Farm, which is exactly where we are right now. Yes. Yeah, Goody Leisure Farm is a lot of things, but what most people know us for is that we are a white meat farm. The farm chose to specialize in white meat, mostly because it is the more nutritious option mm. and it has several benefits yeah. compared to the alternative, which is red meat. Yeah, it is much leaner, it, has, it is a more rich protein source, which is exactly what we need in our society right now, given okay. the many cases of malnutrition yeah and, you know nutrition related uh, things uh, yeah, yeah you know yeah. now what goody where does the name originate from oh, is yeah. there like a fancy story behind the name the goody because in yes. my mind it was guide but mm. it's like goody oh, goody yes, it is goody it comes from the name of the founder ah. goodlanai gabasaza mm. yeah she had this dream of having a place where she could engage young people. Yeah. Way back in 2009, yeah. where so many had resorted into crime. Oh. Crime. So this, yeah. the whole vision behind this farm is mm -hmm. to make sure young people are leading dignified lives. They don't mm -hmm. have to go back to, to things like stealing, See. being idols, yeah. you know, abusing drugs, etc. Yeah. So this farm, it is known to be a white meat farm mostly, but our major business is business intubation. Okay. Yes. What we mean by this is that we skill young people to yeah. become key players in the agribusiness space. Wow. Yeah. You said it's a learning center, so it's a learning center. Do you also look at the commercial side of farming? Do you sell whatever it is that you grow here? Mm. You do that? Yes, we do that, but yeah. our model is kind of different from what you see out there. So the farm does not sell white meat. Huh. What the farm does is that it intubates youth who start their business here in the mm. white meat value chain. So the youth do their production, okay. the farm supports them to start and run their businesses. You give them the land here to yeah. do everything. We give them the land, we give them the space, we mm. give them the inputs, they start their businesses while they are here. Yeah. Yes. So what the youth produce is what we sell. Okay. Yeah. Now um, tell us the sectors, is it sectors or departments you have under yeah. Goody? Yes. So the white meat enterprises that we have here mm. are four. Okay. Yeah, four major ones. We have poultry, yeah. we have piggery, yeah. we have aquaculture, mm. and we have caniculture. Caniculture. That Those rabbits. Are the rabbits. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, the rabbits. So the youth, when they come here, yeah. they are taken through all the different enterprises. Yeah. The ones who are in production. Mm -hmm. They get the skills, the knowledge in each production, but yeah. at the end of that day, they choose where what they want to, to specialize okay. and start their business. What challenges has Goody faced? You know, nothing. Is, I believe nothing is perfect. Yeah. Have you faced any challenges with Goody? Yeah. So we still drink like some mindset change. Mm, oh. People still shun away from agriculture. Thank you. They still think it is something that is for the peasants in that the village. The poor, yeah. Um, it is something that you resort to when all has failed. Mm. They still need to change their mindset to look at it as a business that yeah. could go big and it could sustain their lives mm -hmm. like independently. Okay. Yeah. So the mindset change is really needed because some people come here and they're interested, but others, yeah, they do come here, but at the end of the day, their mind is elsewhere. Okay. So that that the intubation is a transformation process. Mm. Okay. So when they come here and they see everything that is going on, we yeah. kind of open their eyes to the possibilities in agriculture. Yeah. So it's a challenge, but it also gives us an opportunity yeah. to educate okay. and also change their lives in that circle. Yeah. Uh, maybe the other challenge could be mm. the market. You know, the agriculture market mm. is a uh, one of those sectors that's faced with a lot of fluctuations. Yeah, and it's never that. stable. It's never stable. Mm. So 
for their youth to gain from it, they really need to be aggressive in terms of how they maintain quality, how they put themselves out okay. there to be known into the market. Yeah. Yes. But at the end of the day, we are solving the challenges yeah. and we navigate all of these yeah. challenges together. One step at a time. Exactly. I think that's really beautiful. I hope everyone out there, you know, picks something, you know, you know, help one another. Yeah, with exactly. the, the future of it's this all about generation. working all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, any, what, what are the future plans? So, Good Elysia Farm right now mm. is, has, is operating in 22 districts. That means we are getting youth from 22 districts, yeah. but we have a presence in over 150 districts. Okay, yeah. in Uganda. In Uganda. Yeah. So what we want by the end of the year 2030 is to intubate 500,000 youth. Mm. For these youth to be able to start their own business mm. and also change the lives of other youth in their communities. Wow. So we hope by that year 2030 we have touched the lives of 500,000 mm. youth. They have dignified employment. Mm -hmm. They can, they have the capacity to purchase yeah. and, and live their lives mm. with dignity. You know, poverty reduces the dignity, the dignity of a person. You become desperate. You become desperate, people <laughs> look down upon you yeah. and all that. So we want to empower these youth mm -hmm. to become key decision makers, to Thank become you. the change makers yes. in their societies. Wow. Ajahn, thank you so much. I think we're going to look at some of the departments that you have, mm -hmm. but in case someone wants to contact you, do you mind giving us your contact info? Uh, the best place to start is uh, our website, yeah. www.goodleisurefarm.org, yeah. and then uh, we ca you can look us up at social media. Mm -hmm. We have a we have a Facebook page. Yeah. We have a, a Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. We also have um, yeah Instagram. Yeah. So you can look us up on all those social media channels. Yeah. You can send us a message mm -hmm. for a partnership. Maybe you also want to support youth in your in your area. Yeah. Yes, we can work something out. Okay. Yeah. I hope they had that. Yes, we also offer trainings to yeah. individuals. Maybe you're there. You want to learn how to start a rabbit farm. Mm. You want to know how to go into the uh, aquaculture, etc. Mm. We have training packages for private individuals. Yeah. The youth who are not going through intubation. Yeah. Yeah. So you can contact us and get more information of that. We mm. are skilling centre. They will. So every, anyone can be skilled regardless of who you are, mm. where you're from. What she said. Mm. Now, wait, before we leave, mm. what does the leisure stand for in Goody? Is oh. it, do you have some fun so times? What's happening? Asked. Yeah. Yeah, so when this farm started mm. out, it was mostly a leisure farm. Mm. So mm. the leisure, the leisure element is that people could do sport fishing, mm. they could, uh, they could come, we could hold, host holiday camps for the youth who are in, the, in their holidays. Yeah. They could come here like it's a cut of sorts, okay. but mostly in agribusiness. Yeah, it's yeah. like camp, summer camp, like and then they would come here. Camp. You'd come here and you'd learn more than just yeah. agribusiness, even personal development, Thank mapping you. your life. Yeah. putting things into perspective. That's nice. I like yeah. that type of leisure. Yeah, and we you know, like leisure, leisure when walks. you're learning. Yeah. Hmm. You can take a walk around the farm. There is a lot to see. Okay. Yeah, and it's also relaxing. Uh, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's a bit full space. Yeah. Okay, Adam Jai, thank you so much. Let's have a pleasure. look around. I'm Mutama John, mm. the aquaculture manager at Good Leisure Farm. Mm. Uh, where I, I do, we do the fish farming production, mm. we do fish breeding, and also we do teaching, training of the youth that come in. Mm. Even the tourists that come at our farm, we do mm. train them. Yeah. yeah. So that is the thing that we take. To mm. So why fish farming? What, what, um, can you um, introduce us to fish farming? Let's imagine someone has not heard of fish farming before. Yeah, when we talk of fish farming, we mean like raising of fish, maybe in a pond. Yeah. Like this one, you yeah. can raise your fish, maybe in a tanks, like white tanks. Some do maybe like in fish cages yeah. that are on in the in the lakes. Yeah. Yes. Then some people do in the, in also like other systems like aquaponics where they raise f fish and plants at the same time. Mm. But now for us here, we basically deal on Athen fish pond farming, like this one here. Mm. That's where we raise our fish from. Yeah. But when people come with the youth, we take them even through other systems of farming. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, what's, what's one interesting fact about fish farming? Let's, you know, what's that wow? fish farming moment. <laughs> one, one thing about fish farming is that yeah. it's one of the, the ventures that we can take to be still virgin. Yes. Untapped potential. 
Yes. Yeah. Like few people have in, are engaged into it. Yeah. But when you look at the demand, yeah, it's so high. Many people want to eat fish, but it is not easily accessible. You know, it is not there in the market. Yeah. When you go to some most some areas, mm. you won't find their fish. fish. But when you also look at fish, it has more nutritional benefits. Proteins. High quality protein. <laughs> yeah. High quality protein. Yes. In a fish, yeah, it has a number of micronutrients uh -huh. that some of which are lacking in other mm. animal, animal meat. Mm. To say, like the calcium, mm. the potassium, iodine, zinc, yeah, and the most vital one, the omega three and omega six fatty acid, which <laughs> which contributes to human intelligence. Oh yeah, yes. that's why most people who come from areas where they eat fish a lot are the most brilliant kids in school. You're it's right. a fun fact in Uganda. But anyway, um, in case someone wants to start, how much do you think, how much capital do you think they would need so as to start their own fish pond? About starting, yeah. the real fact is, yeah. when you're starting, fish farming requires some good capital mm. for you to start. Give us an estimate. Uh, the estimate will depend on how much, oh. yes, the skill that you want to start with. Yeah. Yes, but we will always encourage people to start small. Mm. Yeah. But if you're to start, mm -hmm. then you need like 10 of these. Yeah. yeah. And it will take you about around 20 million. Mm. Yes. When, when I'm cal 20M. 20M. Mm. When you include all the construction, yeah. you include all the, maybe the fee, cost of the fits, mm -hmm. include labor and all other things that may come in. Oh. But then at the end of it, you also Get likely. In. To get some little for Break the start, even. yeah. Okay. You for the start, you may realize that you're only getting about one percent mm -hmm. oh, profit of that. For the input. start, yes. Yeah. But for the next production cycles, mm. believe me, you will feel like I would have started. Eh? Yeah? Millionaire. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, can we see some points? Because I feel like yes. that's what brought us here today. Mm. Well, does this have a name? Can yes. you name it? This one. This is Pond H. Why? What's Pond H? Pond H mm. is our pond that we we put there some like brood stock, mm -hmm. yes, parent stock for breeding, oh, okay. yes, to produce young fish for yeah. stocking in other ponds. Okay. Yes. So we name it according to pond size, to size mm. of the pond, okay. length and width. Yeah. Then also the number of fish that we put in there. We also include the okay. date that we stocked our okay. fish. What's yeah. the string for? Because I don't see mm, any other pond with a string. The strings are to help, like, to prevent birds, eh? wedding oh, birds from picking, the, picking fish. the fish. Can you imagine? For scaring them. Ah. Mm. Okay, let's go on to the next yes. point. What's, the, what's this one? This one is Pond I. Pond I. Pond I. What's different about Pond I? Now, this is a grow out pond. Uh -huh. It is a grow out pond. We are raising our fish to table size. Oh. Table size is that size, like when you can take it to the to, market. Oh. Yeah. It starts from 300 grams, maybe mm. to, and above, mm. maybe to 700 grams. And how much do you sell your fish? Uh, a kilo, we sell it at 10,000 shillings. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now this is pond G. G, yeah? Yeah, pond G. Okay. Yes. So it is also one of the brooding ponds. Mm. Yes. Now this, you, you can see some nets. These are called harper nets, mm -hmm. where like after harvesting the young fish, mm. which we call fries from the other pond H, yeah. our brooding pond, yeah. we bring and hold them from here. Mm. We feed them to that size when we can. Now take them to the grow out pond, where we can raise it to to table size, okay. for market size. So this is the same as the other one? Yeah, it is the and same. And then this one? Now this is another where we raise it to table size, eh? oh, for market so, size. Oh, you just have multiple of the same thing, yeah? Yes. We have 45 pounds. 
45 pounds 17 18 in this line this line then we have Behind. 45 below that portrait portrait structure yeah and the purpose of that having the two enterprises connected is to maximize uh, space yeah. utilization yes and also on top of that when you have your pond below the portrait structure it means you will use the portrait litter to mm. fertilize your pond even at That's the same wise. time the portrait then can be used as the Feed. feeds oh, yes okay. to your fish yeah. yeah but now let's see some fish we see some fish let's see some fish feeding accounts for about 60 to 70 percent of the total production costs yeah for any enterprise so what do you need to do as a farmer or someone who is engaged in fish farming one you should know the type of feed that you're using which good feeds are you going to use hmm. the type by type yeah. then the most other important things that you need to know the quality of the of that feed that you have selected Besides that, you also have to know which Sorry. quantity <laughs> yes. is which quantity is my fish supposed to eat at this stage. Yes. Then also the time. At what time am I meant to feed my fish? Yeah. So like now for us, we feed at ten. We feed at ten and and four p.m. Yes, basing on the size. But when it is young, we feed it like four times. So this is some of the fish we, we, we got from the other side. Ah. Yes, and now for, the, for for us we use it like when we have our trainees. Yeah. They use this for learning on how to add. What's, it, like, what, what's that feed called? These are crumbles, fish, fish, fish crumbles, eh? crumbles. These ones, they are crumbles, but then there are other feeds that are made in the form of pellets. Mm. Yes. These are complete, complete feeds. They have all the nutrients that your fish need, would need at once. Yes, for optimal growth. Yes. But still, if someone can use other supplementary feeds like uh, maize bran, the maggots, yeah. maggots, earthworms, to mention but a few. Mm. Yes. Okay. And we train need to eat by response. Like mm -hmm. you set your time when you to feed it, feed, eh? and when you come, you will just it will even it will know that, that the come. time has reached, mm. so it will converge at that point yeah. where you feed from. But now, so they're all in the nets. They're not outside uh -uh, here. Not outside. Only that some, a few, yeah. escaped when we are harvesting. I'm seeing one there. Mm. What type of fish is this? It is nilotilapia. Oh yeah. yeah. It is nilotilapia that we are raising, and for it, when What's you here? wish I could touch it with, with good management, yeah, it is most likely to take only six to seven months mm -hmm. to reach that the size of three fifty to five hundred grams. Yeah, that is the size that the market need. So you need to ensure that you you manage well the the water, your, yeah. the quality of the water. Mm -hmm. You also ensure that this the quality of the fish that you have stocked is good. Then also the person that is looking after that. looking after is also knowledgeable mm -hmm. about the, the system. Yeah. Then on top of that feeds. Yeah. Yes, the person should know which kind of feed should use. Mm. And then quality of the feed, quantity. Yeah. Such that you don't overfeed or underfeed. Okay. If you do either of them, you're going to to waste your feeds, okay. or you would not get anything out of All the right. fish farming. According to my youth in the, in the year 2016, okay. like Uganda was producing about 500 metric tons of fish, mm -hmm. which couldn't satisfy the market. Yeah, we were having a deficit of one one million tons of fish for us to meet the nutritional mm. requirement yeah. of the that population that we are having by then. Yeah. So the only solution or the only area that can help to solve 
such a problem mm. basing on the production capacity that we were having of 500 metric tons yeah. is only aquaculture mm. yes and why why aquaculture yeah. with aquaculture you are able to tailor what you want what you want oh, yeah. and what the market needs okay. you can be able to tell when you know that like we know we have a deficit of 1 million yeah. tons of fish that we need to produce yeah but so we can now come back with the fish farming we can come and calculate yeah. there is a deficit of 1 million mm -hmm. tons hmm. so you can calculate basing on that and calculate which number of fish do mm -hmm. i need yeah. to raise which number of pounds do i need if it is cages which number of cages do i need hmm. to raise that number of fish that is required yeah yes uh, another important thing about fish farming mm. is that it's one enterprise that will only put non-agrarian areas mm -hmm. into use. Okay. Yes. Okay. Like the swamps, you can put your cages there. Mm -hmm. Yes. With the demand that mm. is there, mm -hmm. with the deficit that we have, yeah. it gives us an assurance that once someone ventures into fish farming, the market is already there. Yeah. The market is there. People want fish, but it's not their own market. Yeah. Few are engaged into it. Okay. So why can't we come and join? If if the capital, the startup is high, yeah. can't we join? Can we make a pool mm. and start up? Alright guys, we've come to the end of this exciting episode. Now this episode was a bit different and you know, unique. Like we do at Kenganda, we like to bring you all the good things and I do hope that you learned, you know, I think what you about farming, that you're going to join farming in the near future. I don't know, but that's what I'm hoping for. Now do all the nice things and follow us on social media. That is Kenganda Nation Facebook, Kenganda Nation Instagram, Kenganda Nation on Twitter. My name is Janita. Till next time. <laughs>